I actually did a little presentation. So give me one second here. What is that? A backhand slap to Pete? <laughs> not at all not at all all right just ask down here okay. yeah pete's drinking already <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Share. you have to turn on sharing or no you're good to go come on this is not amateur hour all righty all righty to... there's alan the big cto in the group <laughs> yes we're in trouble if that's the case <laughs> Why is this doing this? All right, hold on here. I got too many damn screens open. Um, for the world of technology. I got to love it. Yeah, okay. Share screen. See, that's why I didn't do a presentation. I didn't have there you go. Right. Exactly. Hit, hit the right good. screen there, Pete. Gotta John, be the can you come a little screen. closer to the screen? <laughs> that better? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I guess you're going to hear me talk while I do this, too. It looks like it's... Uh, Everybody see that? Yeah. It's a good looking dude. All righty. So thank you very much, John Noonan from White Plains, New York. So who is this guy? Where did he grow up and what does he do again? I can't remember. <laughs> so, all right. And we're not clicking. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, so okay. first I want to talk about my heroes, my, my parents. Um, my mother uh, was, was quite the dynamic woman in her day. In 1940, she grew up in Utica, New York. Um, first generation, her parents grew up in uh, Poland and Germany, came over and ended up in Utica, New York. So she became a nurse. And on a dare from a friend, uh, she, said, uh, she showed her a New York Times ad. She said, I want you to go to New York City and apply for this job. And she talked to her parents and they were okay with that. So she got on a train and went down to the Marine Air Terminal, now known as LaGuardia Airport, and stood in line with 500 women. And eight of them were picked to be the first eight transatlantic stewardesses that were going to fly on that little plane. That's a Korsky flying boat, which, by the way, the last remaining one sits in Hartford Air Museum. If you've never seen Hartford Air Museum, it's an amazing place. It's second only, uh, it's second to the uh, Smithsonian in the number of planes that's up there. So in any event, she went down, you had to be a nurse because you were going to be the medical attention on the plane. And it took 26 and a half hours to go from the Marine Air Terminal. First, it went to uh, Iceland, refueled, went to Greenland, refueled, and then uh, went off to uh, Foynes, Ireland. And if they had a problem, they landed in the water and it flew at 10,000 feet because they couldn't pressurize. And my mother served 30 passengers, first class up top with nice sleeping berths down below, steerage like anything else, and cooked on a gas stove in the back um, and, and served them three meals. So uh, quite an amazing woman. And it was World War II, 1942. And uh, she had to be debriefed before she got on the plane. And then because there was a lot of spies that were traveling and things like that. So amazing stories I could tell for forever and forever. However, my father was in the U.S. Army Air Corps and uh, he was sent over to Europe and ended up on her plane. I don't know if he missed his transport or whatever happened, but. The story he always said was, you spend 26 and a half hours with a beautiful woman, you convince her to date you. And uh, he asked her for a date and she laughed and said, when do you get out? And he said, a year. Oh yeah, you'll call me, sure. Sure enough, he called her and they got together and three years later, they were married. So uh, that, was, that was the start of the Noonan clan. Now my father spent, uh, let me see if I clip, there we go. My father spent 42 years with TWA Airlines. So uh, he grew up in New York City. My mother was obviously in upstate New York. He was a uh, uh, son of a, you know Irish immigrant and, and, and his mother and uh, ended up working for TWA originally at uh, Idlewild Airport, all the old names of the airports, which is now JFK. So he pushed bags initially coming out of high school and then ended up in the military and uh, then came back to TWA and he did very well in the military. He's a wise guy because in his senior year of high school, he had an option to take either typing or uh, accounting. And he said, well, typing, and there's gonna be a lot of girls in that class. I'm going in that class. And he took shorthand. So when he got in the military, they asked him what skills he had. And he said, well, I can take shorthand and I can type. So he ended up as an admin assistant to a general. 
and uh, never actually had to see the fighting. So smart man. So, <laughs> but in any event, this is me at uh, about four years old. I got to uh, travel the world as a kid, which was pretty exciting. Uh, this is my mother over here and her parents, and that's my uncle over there. Uh, that was my first modeling position. So, uh, you know, the knees and the little socks and <laughs> all that fun stuff. But in the 1960s, uh, I, I was born in Arlington, Virginia. And then we moved to Kansas City because that was TWA's headquarters for a period of time. And then in 1965, TWA moved its headquarters to 605 Third Avenue. And that's how we ended up in White Plains, New York. So upon arriving in White Plains, these two kids here became my best friend. That's me in the middle. I like to show my knees, I guess, when I was small. Uh, Richie was a, a DEA agent and uh, just retired recently. And James is a lawyer up in Massachusetts, both still great friends of mine. So uh, Richie here has the same exact birthday as me. And we've talked for 57 years without missing a birthday. So great friends and, and a great time growing up. So uh, large family, seven kids in my family. So this is 1980. Just this was my father's retirement party when he retired from uh, TWA. My two sisters down here, there's a couple of wives here of my brothers, and then the five of us boys. Those great heads of hair, great mustaches in those days, and look at my nice shades. I was always <laughs> hip and cool. So. <laughs> but uh, then I uh, married my lovely wife, Maria, over here in uh, 1984. So we've been married 38 years this year. And uh, these are some of those friends. These are That's one of the guys, and that's another of the guys from that other picture of my two lifelong friends over there. Okay. And today, this is my family. This is my son, Ryan. He is a postman up in uh, Goldens Bridge, New York, up the line. And this is my daughter, Maggie, who now lives down in Atlanta. Uh, she works in the uh, marketing and video department of the Home Depot. So uh, she's loving it down there. And uh, as a family, this is my wife, Maria. We love to travel. So we were up at the Grand Canyon last year. My brother lives up near that way in Prescott, Arizona. We went out to visit and did the Grand Canyon. Then over here, we were uh, in Tuscany, Italy. So uh, in October 2021, that's only half the group. 16 of us rented a villa in Tuscany. Uh, my wow. wife is Italian. We all love to cook. And we took a bunch of cooking classes at the villa and uh, um, toured and uh, traveled and just had a great time as a family, just connecting. And uh, lots of this stuff over here, lots of beautiful red wine. This was on the, uh, the balcony of the villa that we rented. Every night there would be this beautiful sunset and we'd go up there and enjoy some red wine. So today I keep up some of the Italian traditions. This Irishman has gone Italian. So uh, we make dried sausage every year, uh, fresh sausage, and we dry it in the attic during the winter. And then in uh, late uh, se or early September, we do the tomato sauce. So uh, we've always got fresh tomato sauce, fresh sausage, and lots of pasta at our house. So as I said, come on over anytime, just bring some wine. You're always invited. And now I'm a part of the V5O family. Yeah, so this was our, <laughs> this was our uh, first face-to-face uh, -face where we got to have a cocktail a couple of months ago or a month and a half ago in White Plains. So very happy to be part of the family and appreciate everybody's support. So that's a little bit about me and my family. And now I'll tell you a little bit about what I do today. So uh, I am the president and owner of Growth Plan Partners. We say we build a sales structure for superior results. And I'll explain how all that works. <coughs> so first I thought, why, why am I doing this? Why am I out on my own? Why am I a sales consultant and a fractional CFO, just like Peter is on, I mean, fractional sales VP. Um, well, I went to, uh, got educated in New York. I got my BS from NYU, commuted down there from Westchester and did my four years down there. And then I obtained an MBA from Pace University. Uh, I am a certified sales leader, which is a certification from Sales Acceleration. And I did 30 years as an EVP of sales and marketing, starting with Avery Dennison, a big $2 billion company at the time. It was great boot camp. I got a lot of great experience in my early management training. It's where I decided I wanted to be a manager as opposed to a salesperson. I just enjoyed building teams and working with teams and, and uh, having fun building sales for organizations. So. And I went on to work uh, another, you know, 25 years with several signage, printing, LED companies. I've always been in kind of the branding world, if you will, the physical brand of a company. 
had some aspect of that, worked with a lot of design companies and had a blast. But, you know, I was traveling 50% of the time, you know, away three nights a week, many, many times, missed a lot of the family's activities, uh, you know, well compensated, but just wanted some more joy and satisfaction in my life. So decided to uh, try to give back here and maybe help some small and medium sized companies with what I do. Again, just like Peter does with the financial side and the other offerings that they have. So I am now an entrepreneur and my job is to help many companies grow and, and do it for groups that either can't afford it or actually in trouble. Okay. So what do we do? How do we do it? So, you know, many businesses struggle with sales, right? Entrepreneurs, it's a tough thing. You, you got a great product, you got passion, you get out there, you get it started, you build it up to a point and you, you get stuck. You know, you're either trying to do too much yourself or you just haven't built the sales engine. So, you know, I partner with a company called Sales Acceleration, which is uh, 180 like-minded individuals like me uh, with similar backgrounds, and we share and pool all of our knowledge so we can offer our clients the latest and greatest in processes, procedures, comp plans, forecasting models, all the good things that we have to do for a company to get them back to growing. And uh, we have all those tools available. So again, I build this sales engine to help create record-breaking growth, you know, hopefully pulling people out of a hole and sending them to the next level or giving them the opportunity to sell their business and, uh, you know, for twice what they thought it was worth once we can, we can build up those sales. And, you know, simply we create a sales plan, we have find their best customers and we grow sales. We hire, we fire, we, we have a recruiting firm. Again, we only bring in salespeople, sales management, but there's dozens and dozens of ways that, that we help these folks on a fractional basis. Okay. So who do we serve? Uh, again, very similar to Peter again. Uh, we help businesses you know, that are uh, to build the right processes, assemble the right team, and put the right tools in place to grow. So small to mid-sized businesses, I said start up here to 75 million, but you know we've got bigger clients as well, but that's kind of our sweet spot for who we serve. Uh, we are B2B focused strictly, uh, don't do a lot of B2C kind of work, it's, it's the B2B clients. Uh, and we've worked in every major industry and the industries still continue to amaze me. I have one advisor, a friend of mine that built his whole practice on law firms. And I was like, what does a law firm sell? I, I don't get it. And he says, well, come on. He says, every law firm, you know, you come in, you're required to bring in a book of business. What lawyer was ever taught how to sell, you know, how, how to prospect, how to, how to bring clients in on a regular basis. So he puts a whole process together for bigger law firms and, and uh, shows them how to put a playbook together and, and a tote board so that everybody stays on track. But um, we're looking for companies experiencing declining or stagnant sales. These are the ones that we can help the, the, the quickest and, and the ones that are in the most trouble and where we get most of our joy in, in helping clients like that. So we also, though, work with companies that are growing too fast, that great product, and we just hired people. We got people stepping all over one another, and we have no process, and everything starts to get compl you know, complicated, and then you know they start to... Uh, you know, interfere with each other's efficiency. So we can, again, come in, get the processes in place, get every, everything established for a clean, lean running machine, okay? And then companies that don't have the right sales strategy or know where to start or create one. Again, those companies that just grew from nothing, now they're stuck, they don't know where to go. And a company or owner or leader who's wearing multiple hats and has a lack of time to effectively manage their sales team. They just, they're trying to do too much. They work 12 hours a day and everything stops because that's, that's all the energy that they have. So we can come in and show them how to take it to the next level. Okay. Well, so the areas that we help companies, you know, we take them through the complete sales uh, strategy process execution lifestyle, as we call it. So all the key areas, I won't read them all for you, but, you know, from the bodies, putting the right butts in the right seats with a comp plan that motivates everybody all the way through everything we do with CRM training, sales projections, forecasting, et cetera. So we, we come in to either build this plan if we know that someone else can execute it there or we come in on this fractional basis where we become the CFO, I mean, the uh, chief sales uh, executive there and actually run the business and run that unit and, and become part of the management team until we decide who can take it over 
And then once we decide who that is, we have a great training program to certify them. They can become a certified sales leader as well. Okay, next one here. Well, what about that? Uh, we do an annual survey. When we work with a client, we give them a very extensive uh, assessment test and we let them tell us where they think their pain is. And then we assemble all that information, just like a doctor would ask a thousand questions before he prescribed anything. We gotta know where the pain is and where the problems is. So we assemble these questionnaires. We do uh, over a thousand question, questionnaires like this or assessments per year with our clients. And this is just you know what we see. 90% of the small and medium businesses we're talking to are struggling with a sales strategy. They don't know what their industry position is, who their competitors are. They haven't put in a clear value prop. They struggle with the sales methodology. They don't know how to set up territories, coverage, processes. They, you know, in fact, the majority of them don't even have a CRM or record anything there. And then 90% struggle with the organization. You know, turnover is at an all time high. So uh, again, our in-house recruiting firm is very cost effective and, and, and twice, um, uh, as performs twice as well as far as getting the proper people in a long-term role, okay? And then they struggle with the whole sales analysis. Most of them don't even have quotas or metrics or reporting or a report card to look at, so, okay? So who's my perfect client? I'd appreciate your help finding. Yep, they seem to have built a successful company, but they don't feel successful. They're just struggling. They're frustrated, struggling. Sorry, said that one already. <laughs> They're in pain. They're just putting in too much time and not getting enough reward. They feel lost and without hope. They just don't know how they're going to dig out of this hole and get themselves back up to where they were and beyond. So, and of course, they're experiencing high turnover. You know, they're just going nuts. These are the people I can help the best. All right. And my solution is like every other solution all of us sell, right? It's putting the right people in the right seats putting a process together that everybody can follow and then profit follows. That's simple. And thank you. That's me and what I do. Appreciate it.